You think they had more than one guy? Oftentimes? Things raised. Sometimes they had more than When we talk about these early religions, remember that they are going to vary regionally. Yes, Jennifer. What is anthropomorphic? Anthropomorphic means that they either re are represented by men. So, like Zeus is an anthropomorphic god, right? He is a man that represents thunder and lightning, right, and the storm, right? Or I guess a more modern equivalent would be like Thor represents thunder and lightning, right? Or they could be animals with uh, with human characteristics, right? So there's a couple ways you can do it. So like uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh is an anthropomorphic figure. All right. All right, we're going to see the development of Zoroastrianism in what will become modern-day Iraq, right? Persia. Yeah, Cliff. Um, so like, was you know, like, like Jesus was like Jesus. Oh, they had what? Oh, well, they're, the Egyptian gods did, yeah. So, like Osiris and whatnot. Yeah, that would have been, yeah, that would have been it. Right, uh, we get Zoroastrianism, right? Phelps in Persia, it's a dualistic faith, meaning they have two gods, right? They have a good god and a bad god. Right, they have their good god, Ahura Mazda, they have their bad god, whom I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Yeah, bad god. <laughs> we also will see our first monotheistic faith, right? Hebrew monotheism will also pop up. Right? Try to think back to that first, uh, um, you know, that, that first uh, Socratic discussion that like five of y'all participated in. The rest of y'all were like. Oh, we have to go see the sun go down. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was when he called him Ben Child. Alright, remember that the founder of this is going to be Abraham. He's important because he will be considered the founder of not only uh, Judaism, but also Christianity and Islam. <laughs> All right, the holy book will become the Torah. Um, and these will be, uh, this will be the religion of the Semitic peoples. Right, and again, you see some of these early words where you're seeing like Semites and, 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 and Israelites uh, uh, or Judeans, right? And these are important words for not this class, right? For us, we're going to just kind of lump everybody together. We don't have to get that specific yet. We're not an Old, we're not an old Testament or a, a, or a Torah class, right? We don't have to get that specific. We're not an ancient history class, right? Um, so for us, we're going to kind of lump everybody together, even though you might hear, if you ever like do any kind of deep dive in this, they're going to tell you the difference between all these different groups of people. Don't worry about that. All right. Uh, remember that the big thing here is that this uh, religion will get spread about because of diaspora. Right? This doesn't mean necessarily that we're seeing other groups of people adopting this. What we're seeing is practitioners of this spread. Right, so it's not an evangelizing faith like we'll see with Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism, right, where they go out and they intentionally try to convert folks. Instead, the diaspora becomes important for, uh, um, for Judaism because that's what that's what creates the spread of the religion, right, as those groups get spread out, right? We'll also see Bedism. Bedism. <laughs> Right, they will move into the Indian subcontinent during this time, right? A group of Persian people known as the Aryans will invade into northern India and they will bring with them their Vedic religion. Right? Yeah, there's that, right? The most famous of them will be the, the Rig Veda. 
It will be written in Sanskrit and will form the foundations of Hinduism. Right, so this is the proto-Hindu faith. It's where they get the caste system. It's where you know, the basis for the religion will come from. All right, we're going to take a short break, about 10 minutes.